Louise, thank you for doing this. You're welcome. It's been way too long. We should have done this years ago. I want to start talking technical. Let's talk mics and mic packs. <laughs> Right? Because okay. we were putting on the mic, right? And yeah. then you started talking about where two mics and legs or whatever. So how do you work with that as a performer with things here and here and here and packs? Uh, I think the first time I had to wear a mic pack in a show was, I think, Les Mis. A real, the real, the nice ones, the little skinny ones. And, uh, but luckily I was wearing wigs. So the thing is you do the pin curls and the net and then you put the microphone cord there fix it to the net and you know about there is the best place for the little mic right. to be and then the wig but because you sweat and I had to do super quick wig changes they wanted to tape it that's one of the things about having it right there so I still have a bit of a bald spot just around here my hair's down on it now but I have a healthy my hair grows quickly and the new growth is always very apparent all around my hairline but there's a little spot that still hasn't gotten over the fact that there, there was tape there eight times a week. And then when you take it off, as careful as you try to be, you're still going to rip some hair off. But um, yeah, the pack itself is a problem in that it depends what you're going to do physically, obviously, in the show. So if you have to sit like this, or if you have to have a fight scene and you're on the floor, you're lying down, then the pack right in the middle of the back is not an option. And especially in say les mis i was wearing a corset under all the other clothes so the pack had to be in my leg uh on the thigh where's your pack now right now it's on the floor behind <laughs> the chair i love that <laughs> now why do sound people put the pack on your spine people keep putting the pack on your spine right this is the transmitter right the batteries and all the yeah. rest of it i don't get that well i suppose it's like anything else it's like a, a belt or whatever it seems to be the most obvious place right. uh for women, though, I find most of the time your costumes don't look that good with the little hump in the back there. So I would much rather have it on the thigh or behind the thigh uh, or on the bra strap. See, they can make something that just hook it onto the back of the bra and then the top can fall down and that doesn't look so bad. That's a good place, actually. And does the technology ever get in your way? Do you know, uh, there have been times where I've ended up with real bruises and marks because the mic pack was obviously not in the good place and you forget that it in that one scene oh my god I forgot that I had to do that real sit back really hard whack right on your spine so yeah that's happened the only time holy geez once I did a concert with the Hamilton Phil me and Jeff Hislop and we got there and they wanted us to use these labs but they put them on us and I went wow man that looks like an antique I've never seen it wasn't the little guy. It, it was a little bigger with a bit of a foam thing around it. And they wanted us to wear them here. I like to wear it there, but they said no there. Halfway through the concert, I swear to God, it was like, oh, oh, God. I yanked mine off. It was burning. The and Jeff had, like I mean, a burn, a serious, wow. I know. I think about that. <laughs> I can't believe we didn't, like, we should have gotten something for them. <laughs> I don't know. If that had been in the States, man, they would have been sued and it would have been awful. But he had... So what, there was a battery in there that was heating up or I what? I don't know. It had some kind of shorts. I have no idea. I've never seen anything like it. So wait a minute. You took it off and then you lost the amplification and... Oh, that was that. And then they came running over and I think it was at intermission. And went, oh my God, blah, blah. And they changed them, gave us some other ones, which I was scared to use, but it was okay. I could actually feel it, like wow. just sparking. And have you ever had a pack fall off? You ever lost your pack, so to speak? Uh, yeah. And what I, happens, the I've sound cuts out or? No, as long as it doesn't disconnect. I right. remember just grabbing it and just holding onto it for the rest of the. And when the you started day. performing, did you have packs in the labs or did you perform? When you entered the theater business, yeah, was no. it before that kind of? And what was the switch like? Well, the switch is fantastic because all of a sudden you don't have to scream uh, right. and push so hard, you know? I mean, my God, yeah, it was fantastic. So from the, without the tech singing to tech-assisted singing, 
how much would you pull back or be able to drop your, your kind of projections? You know what? Not a lot. I mean, people think right. you can just sit right back. Not really. You still want to give it the same intensity. And if I'm going to sing a note in full voice, I'm still going to sing it in full voice right. with the mic pack. I basically sing the same way without that extra over the top push to try and reach the very back wall, right. you know? But, but the thing about that is you are singing as you sing. But when you're wearing one of those, you cannot trust that what you're doing is what they're hearing out there because there's somebody at the big soundboard doing this all the way through the show. And that is the really huge negative so how does that or work? Or positive, then? depending on who's at the board. And the person mixing at the board then has some say in how your song is delivered, yes? Yeah. Yeah. So how do you work on that? Do you say, do you have a friend sit out in the audience going, no? No, because or even a friend, would they say, I'm, besides, I'm not the sound designer, so I can't go ahead and tell the guy yeah. how to mix over there. But you can have talks about it and you know say look my voice has a lot of stuff to it it doesn't need a lot of zhuzh thrown onto it you know but hey listen the sound design is what it is and you are at their mercy you truly are it's it's an amazing who's the thing. creator who's the creator the singer or the sound designer that's my question right because you have a creator right the song is given the yeah. music is given the words are given and the performer then creates it in the space and then suddenly, before the performer in the space, there's a glass wall because someone on the other side yeah. of the glass wall goes, well, we're actually going to take Louise and we're going to make her do that. Yeah. Yeah. You would think that person would be part of the creati creative team well, and saying, okay, sure. well, what, do, what are we looking for? In and I think here? it's up to the performer maybe to try and have talks with these people and really find out what they're after and what they're looking right, for right. and how much are they going to screw it. they mostly it's volume yeah. Yeah. but still quality of voice too i mean you you really don't know what you sound like out there you're hearing it from the monitors on stage and i mean you, you think it sounds like that but in les mis we all took a, a turn you know we got to sit out in the audience right. and watch the show which that's never happened before or since but you got to hear what it sounded like and you so in my na naivety, the mix is appearing in the monitors on stage as well as in the house? Yeah, but it's not, it doesn't sound the same in the right, monitors, right. obviously, because it's just coming right at you on stage as opposed to being sent out. In the, they mix for the house. Right. And that guy, depending on where he is, that guy or that woman, uh, sometimes they're right at the back, but they could be under the balcony too. And I find if you sit under the balcony, it's a, it sounds a little different than it does towards the front of the house.